standing. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have myself sitting over here reminding me to turn my microphone on, so the people uh, online didn't hear any of that I just said. But everybody that's here heard everything we said, so just, just be assured that we do have some prayer requests that we need to lift up this morning. Uh, we, we thank John and Crystal for being here, and uh, We'll move forward now with, uh, we're going to skip the scripture reading and go to page 750. If you'll turn in your hymn book to 750, this is going to replace our affirmation of faith and it goes along with John's message uh, this morning. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Day to day, words forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end. In them God has set a tent for the sun, which comes forth like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and runs his course with joy like a strong man. This bridegroom is from the end of the heavens, and is serving to the end of them, and there is nothing hidden from his teeth. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, and are together. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than the money, and Moreover, by them is your servant warned, and keeping them there is great reward. Also keep your servant from the insolent. Let them not have dominion over me. If you bow with me in prayer. Loving Father, thank you for this holy day, for loving us, for caring for us. Thank you for this time to gather and worship you. We know that wherever we are, you are always with us. We have so much to be thankful for. Our homes, our families, friends, this church and all of its rich history, and all the witnessing it has done for you over the years. We thank you for John and Crystal and how they have blessed our community this week. 
Hearts have been touched and changed, and for that we thank you for bringing those to the study and preparing their hearts for the messages. We ask that you bring John and Crystal back home safely. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings you put in our daily lives and ask that you cover all the medical teams, nurses, doctors, and first responders that work daily to keep us and our families safe. We know, God, that we have not always loved you as we should, and we do not always love our neighbors as you taught us. Help us to be kinder and gentler people in this world. Help us to see them through your eyes. God, we lift Glenna and Shirley this morning and ask that you remind them that we love them. We remember all the lost and forsaken this morning in our prayers and all the prayers that have been dropped in our prayer box since last Sunday. Forgive us, Lord, when we do not show the world how much you love them. Forgive us our sins, intentional and unintentional. And now, God, during this period of silence, we bring our personal prayers, confessions, and petitions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we lift to you all the leaders of our nation and all around the world. We ask for much blessings and peace in the war-torn areas of the world, including Ukraine and the Middle East. We ask that you keep the hostages safe from more harm and comfort their families. We ask that you keep people safe in Israel, here in America, and all over the world. Most of all, Father, I ask that you keep us all in your will, that you keep the distractions of the world at bay so we don't get in the way of your good work. Help us to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Thank you, God, for sending us your Son to teach us how to love you and each other. And now with the confidence of God's people, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If our usher will come forward, we'll have our morning tithes and offerings. and offerings 
All belongs to you, and we return a meager portion. Father, just use these gifts to your will to better your kingdom in our community, our nation, and the world. Amen. If you turn now in your hymn books to page uh, 419. meeting of the 10-day journey in the book of Revelation. We have covered a lot of material in the last 10 days, and uh, I just want to say how much I feel blessed to be able to be here for these 10 days sharing the Word of God and, and visiting with you folk who have been coming night after night, and, uh, and the good meals over here at Flynn's Restaurant, and uh, we've just been blessed. I tell you, blessed so much. And what a community. I don't think there's another community any place like Gold Hill. There's something about this place, Gold Hill. Oh, there you go. That's good. That's right. That's right. In heaven will be a better place. And I got a feeling there'll be a little restaurant there someplace. That <laughs> So, yeah, we've been blessed. And David and Beverly, David, I, I, I'm glad that you took the part this morning because 
it doesn't bother me to stand up and speak, but to do what he did just then, I would be shaken. I mean, he did a fantastic job with it. So I can see why he and Beverly are, are married to each other. They, they both help each other uh, in their services and so forth. So this, this was great. I felt blessed by that. Hey, what we're going to cover this morning is uh, the last meeting. And uh, if you looked at our little thing here, it says, Following Jesus in the Revelation. Well, that's what it's been about ever since we started a week ago, Friday night, and it's been following Jesus. It's the whole book of Revelation is about Jesus Christ. And uh, so what I'm going to do this morning in closing is kind to kind of a review of what we covered in 10 nights, and we're going to go through 22 chapters. Now don't get up and leave because it's not going to take uh, 22 hours, all right? It's going to take just a little while, and uh, so yeah, we'll get through it, the 22 chapter, just a quick review. And then I want to close with a second part, and that is, are we ready? And I think that's the big question when we look at Revelation and we study those chapters that we've studied over and over again. The Bible brings that out. Are we ready? Are we prepared? Are we getting uh, ready for the coming of Jesus? And, and so we're going to go into that right now and then we're going to look at that about how to be ready and are we ready. Let's, let's bow our heads for an added word of prayer. Father, we just want to thank you for for the great time my wife and I have had here in this Gold Hill area. Lord, we've been blessed. We've seen some real miracles. We've seen people grow in the knowledge of the Lord. I've grown this week, Lord, just coming close to you and having that connection with Jesus Christ. And Lord, help us all to continue to draw closer to Jesus, to be so connected with Christ that whatever happens in our life, we know that God's got a plan to carry us through. So, Lord, bless us right now as we open your word. We thank you. We invite the Holy Spirit. We invite the Holy Spirit, the Father and the Son, to bless us through your word, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to take your Bibles, go over with me to the book of Revelation in chapter 1. And we're going to begin there in chapter 1 of Revelation. And I'm going to share with you what I have found in God's Word and the importance of God's Word. Uh, this is the book. I've said this every night. This is the book. This is what we believe in. This is what we trust. We have no other way of knowing what God's plan is for my life and your life except through this book. And so God's Word is special. It's precious. And uh, because what did Jesus say? He said, I am the Word. I am the life. And so it's through Jesus Christ that we find that love and that mercy. But in chapter 1 of Revelation, look at verse 5, if you would, please. Right here in chapter 1, Revelation, verse 5, it says, God has washed us by His blood, by the blood of Christ. You know what? That, that verse stands out, and I believe this verse is one of the most important verses here in the the book of Revelation. It's by the blood. We are blessed. We are saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the light. We can put all our faith, all our trust in Him because He promises He's going to carry us through. Look at verse 7. Verse 7, He says, I'm coming again. Oh, you put those two together. Jesus came the first time to set me and you free. To die for us in my place, your place. Second time he's coming again in power and great glory. But that time, the second coming, when he comes the second time, he's coming without sin and the salvation. He's coming because he wants every one of us before he comes to make sure we have been forgiven, we have been washed, and we've been set free from sin. What a God. What a God. His plan is so, so wonderful. Chapter 2. Chapter 2. It says, go back to your first love. Look at verse 4 there. If you've fallen, if you've goofed up, if we've made mistakes, 
and we've fallen from that first love. What does that mean, first love? Boy, I tell you what, when I met my wife the first night, when I came up to her at a basketball game right up here at Easter Land, and I looked at her and I said, hey, baby, what's your name? And that's how it all began. And we began to date after finally it took a long time before she'd tell me her name. It probably took a month or so. And, but finally she did. And you talk about in love. And we still are after all these years. We're still in love, madly in love. But I want to tell you, there was something about that first love. Boy, if it was snowing, and my dad said, you can't go drive the car tonight. I want to tell you, I was about to jump that train. You know, we have a train comes right through. Does it still travel those tracks? Okay. Yeah, it used to be you'd see it once, maybe twice a day. And that train, and I would, it would be snowing like crazy outside. And I wanted to go see my, my first love, my love for Crystal. And, and I wanted to jump the train when Dad said I couldn't have the keys to the car. You know. No. And uh, so that first love, God wants us to come back to our first, because our first love with God is, you want to tell everybody. Yes. You know, when you give your life to Jesus, you just want to say, I'm going to tell mom, I'm going to tell dad, I'm going to tell brothers, sisters, I'm going to tell my cousins, my schoolmates, I'm going to tell all of them. And I did. I want to tell you, when I first became a Christian, I was on fire for the Lord. And God wants us to keep that love. And if we've lost it, if we backslidden, he wants us to come back to that kind of a relationship with Christ that we want to tell the world, Jesus loves you, this we know. Chapter 2, verse 16 says it's time to repent of our sins, to make sure we turn everything over to God. Verse 26, he wants us to overcome. He wants us to be victorious. And the Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 11, we overcome by the blood of Jesus. That's the only way to make it through this crazy, crazy world. Chapter 3, look at Revelation chapter 3 verse 5. It's about Jesus again. It's Christ's righteousness, His way, His truth. Same chapter, 14 through 18. He says, church, I want you to wake up. Church people, I want you to wake up. He says we're led to sin. He says we're sleeping. We're not doing what we should do. We think we're okay just like we are. And we can just go on about our lives. And he says I want you to wake up. I want you to be hot or I want you to be cold. But I don't want you to be lukewarm. And friends this message is for me and all of us here today. We need to wake up. We need to get up. And soon we're going to go up. Amen. Jesus is coming. Same chapter. Chapter 3 verse 20. One of my favorite verses in the Bible. Revelation 3.20 Jesus says, Behold I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. What a relationship Jesus offers to me and you. I'm knocking he says. By the way I think this church years ago had a picture somewhere and it might still be here someplace in the church a picture of Jesus knocking on the door and if you look at that picture if you ever seen one of them how many have seen that picture of Jesus knocking on the door look real close because there's no doorknob on the side where Jesus is knocking and there's a real meaning behind that. And the meaning is Jesus knocks on the door, but he's not going to force his way in. He says, he that will open the door and let me in, I will live with him and dwell with him. He says, we'll have a, a good experience together. So I need to open the door for him. Chapter 4. Chapter 4, all through chapter 4 is about the heavenly sanctuary. Verse 11, it makes it clear who Jesus is. Jesus is creator of all things things. He is the way. He is the truth. And He is the life for each one of us. Chapter 5. Oh, I love chapter 5 of Revelation. If you remember studying that, Revelation chapter 5, only one could open the book. Only one. No man in heaven, no man on earth, no man any place, no creature of any kind could open the book but one. And it's the Lamb of God. Oh, I love it. Jesus is the truth. 
truly the Lamb of God. Are you noticing something all these chapters? It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus Christ. If we leave Him out, we've left everything out. We need to lift Him up. Chapter 6, the history of the church. Revelation chapter 6, verse 11. Here you find again the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Verses 12 through 17, the last days of earth's history. The Bible tells us in Revelation 6, 12 through 17, there are two groups in the very end of time. You've got those that are ready and those that are going to run to the rocks and the mountains and pray to the rocks and mountains, hide us from the coming of the Lord. Dear friends, don't miss this. I don't want to be one of those that wants to be hid, be, be hid from Jesus Christ. I want to be one of those is looking up and saying, Lo, this is my God. We've waited for Him. We don't need to wait anymore because He's coming soon. Amen. We can make sure of our salvation. Chapter 7 does that. Chapter 7, verse 3 and 4, it gives us the seal of God and how important the seal is. In that same chapter, Revelation 7, 14, it's all about Christ's righteousness. We, he gives us that fine linen. He gives us that white raiment that is His, that He gives to us so we can be covered. You see, my righteousness, your righteousness is as filthy rags. That's what Isaiah says. There's nothing good about me and you, but I'll tell you what, with Jesus, we're okay. We're okay. We got Jesus covering us, standing in our place. We're okay because Christ, again, is the way, the truth, the life. Revelation chapter 8, the Bible says that there's going to be a silence in heaven at the presence of the Lord, and He's going to come. All of heaven is coming down to this earth to take us home. What a reunion. What a day to imagine that all, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, all the holy angels, over 100 million angels, according to Revelation 5.11, they're all coming to take us up to glory and we shall reign with Christ throughout the ages of eternity. What a day. It's coming. It's coming. Chapter 9, Revelation the seal of God. Look at verse 4, Revelation 9, 4, the seal of God in the people's foreheads. God wants His mark on you. There's two marks in Revelation. One is the mark of the beast and the other is the mark of God. And they're both placed in the same place, in the forehead, in the mind. God wants my mind filled with the love of Jesus. Wow. We're moving right along in Revelation, aren't we? Look at chapter 10, verse 11. Wow, here it says in Revelation 10, verse 11, that God's people will be a witness. They will share. You see, here, here's the thing. Going back to that first love, if we're really in love with Jesus, you can't help but share it. I want to tell you, you know, it, it, was, it was kind of funny. I got to tell you a little story this morning. Uh, we were eating breakfast, my wife and I, and, and uh, uh, we stay oftentimes in the Hampton there in, in Salisbury. And just down the road a few miles is the big organization, uh, religious group, and I probably don't have to say names, but, uh, but they're up there on, uh, I think, Old Concord Road and so forth. And it's a big place where they meet all the time. So the whole motel is full of the, with those sweet people. Uh, and and uh, they're called JW. Okay, I'm not going to say the name, but uh, anyway, they're, they're all in here. And, we're, and one of the things that they don't do or won't do, and that is they're not supposed to read your literature. You know, and they won't accept your literature. And so it was so neat. This man came around and he was just as nice as he can be. He was talking to all the people around the breakfast table. And he came over and, and he gave us a couple little gifts that he had in his pockets. And, and I said, man, you're so nice. I'd love to give you a little gift. And, and uh, we told him our name. He said, oh, Earnhardt. He said, oh, yeah, I remember Dale Earnhardt. And, so, and the conversation went on. And I said, well, listen, I've got a book about Dale. Would you be interested in reading it? Oh, that would be a nice gift. So I ran out of the car, and it was the first time I've ever had one to take my literature. 
And I felt so good about it, you know. So hopefully he reads that book, you know, because there's a lot in there about Jesus and who Jesus is, because Jesus is God. Jesus is Lord and Savior. Jesus is our righteousness, amen, and to share that with people. So you get on fire for the Lord. You want to witness chapter 10, verse 11. Look at chapter 11, verse 19. The temple of God in heaven contains the ark. The Ark of the Covenant. Inside of the Ark of the Covenant is the Ten Commandments. And that's going to come forward one day, my friends, here very soon. People are going to see that God wrote the Ten Commandments with His own finger. And all Ten Commandments are important because it's God's love to us. It's actually God's character. I did a study years ago and I took all the verses I could find on the character of God and I took all the verses I could find on the Ten Commandments commandments, Old Testament, New Testament, and I was amazed. It was the same. God's character and His Ten Commandments He wrote with His own finger were the same. So I call it the character of God. It's God's character, you know, given to us so that we can have a part of God's great love and great mercy. Chapter 12, 1 through 6, God has a people. Chapter 12, verse 17, God's people will keep the Ten Commandments and have faith in Jesus Christ. Again, you cannot separate the love of God from the Ten Commandments. The love of Jesus Christ, they go together. They're connected because you and I cannot keep the commandments in our own power. And my God says this, if we will receive Him, this is John 1, 12, if we will receive Him, He will give us power to become the sons and daughters of God. Isn't that wonderful? That He gives me and you the power to live the Christian life. Chapter 13, well, you know what that's about. you got two powers, the Antichrist and Jesus Christ. Well, I want to choose Jesus. Revelation chapter 14. Give you time to look this one up. Chapter 14, verse 12. That's Revelation 14, 12. Again, it says that God's children, God's people will keep the commandments of God and have faith in Jesus Christ. Chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. Strong words here in Revelation 15, 1 and 2. It says that God's people that reign with Him will reject the Antichrist, His mark, His name, and His number. What an interesting study. If you didn't catch that one the other night, go back and watch it. It, it was a, a tremendous subject on the Bible prophecy of Revelation 13. Look with me at Revelation 16. Revelation 16 consists of the seven plagues of those that reject Reject Christ and follow man. You see, that's the choice that each one of us have. God will never, never force us to worship Him. He opens it up. He shares what, with us what it means to worship Him. And then He says, I'm going to do this. I'm going to also give you power. I'm going to come into your life and I'm going to help you and mold you and make you so you can follow me. What a God. We're not robots. We're free choice people. We can choose to follow Him or reject Him. And that's why I do this all over the country and in other countries. I want to see a great number of people choose to worship and follow Jesus Christ. Chapter 17, oh what a chapter. It's all about that bad woman who is led by the Antichrist and rejects God's Word. The whole chapter consists of that power. Chapter 18, wow, the Bible says that the Antichrist will fall. Her family actually turns against her. Revelation chapter 18. And the Bible goes as far to say that the day will come when that system will be open and everybody will know and those that have followed her realize it has been a deception and they come against her. At one time they were following her. At one time the Bible says they were her children following her, but at the end time, those people realize what she has done and they turn against her. And what a day that will be. Chapter 19, the importance of the bride, the lamb, and those who follow Jesus. 
There's going to be a wedding, folks, <laughs> like you have never seen before. I had a wedding not too many years ago in a place called Big Stone Gap, Virginia. Has anybody ever been up there? It's right in the corner of several states. And uh, I want to tell you, that was an experience. My wife went up there to preach and share. Uh, that back then, it was four weeks. We'd go, David, <laughs> how would you like it if I went four weeks and every night? Boy, I'd be give out too, wouldn't you? That'd wear me out. But we were up in Big Stone Gap, Virginia, and some neat, neat people that live up in that area. And uh, this young lady and young man was coming to the seminar, and they asked if I would perform their wedding. And I was more than happy to perform their wedding. And uh, it was kind of interesting because uh, the day of the wedding, uh, they were ready. She, he, she went out. They were very poor people. She went out and rented a, a, a gown, a wedding gown. And the guy went out and rented a tux. And, and they looked so beautiful. They had never worn any clothes like it, I'm going to tell you. But the day of the wedding, and the father is going to give away the bride. And I'm in the church there for the wedding and and here comes the, the the groom of course is beside of me waiting for the bride to come in and about that times the doors open up and this bride and her father walk in the door and I want to tell you it was a picture and the picture was she was in a beautiful white gown and all ready for the wedding and he was in a pair of shorts a t-shirt and holy tennis shoes Nobody said a word against it, but he was so proud, and that's all he had. I mean, he didn't have any nice clothes. He didn't have uh, good shoes, and, but he came in beside her walking down that aisle, and I'm smiling so big, and I'm thinking, God loves those two right there. And when I said, who gives this woman to be married to this man? Oh, he was so proud. He said, I do. I do. And uh, so it was, it was beautiful. But you know, the wedding that we're getting ready to go to says that you better have on better clothes. It does. That's what it says. It says, I want you to be dressed to the T because the clothing that we're supposed to have on is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. If we've got the righteousness of Jesus Christ, you you will be welcome to this wedding. It's the wedding of the bride. I want to tell you, I want to be ready. I want the righteousness of Jesus Christ to cover me. When Jesus comes the second time, when the Father looks down on us to see what kind of people we are, He's going to see Jesus standing in my place. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. whole book of Revelation is about Jesus. Wow. Chapter 20, verse 4. Those who are saved reject the Antichrist and the mark and the number and their name. His name, God's name is in our foreheads. Yes. What is God's name? What is God's mark? Part of it is the Lord our righteousness. The other part is God wants to place Hebrews chapter 8. He says, I want to write my laws in your heart and in your mind. You know, this is something I couldn't understand for many years as I studied my Bible. Why is it you find the Ten Commandments and the heart always together, those two? Well, it makes sense today because the heart represents love. Amen. And by the way, fellas, I'm going to tell you something. When February 14 comes around, you better have some hearts. Because if you don't, she's going to tell you. All right. And isn't it interesting? God takes or God's one that actually came up with this first. Hearts, you you go you go around the stores, Walmart or in those drug stores or whatever, and you're going to see boxes of candy hearts and and hearts all over the place representing love, and that's the same thing with the Bible. He says, "Let your heart keep my commandments." The only way I'm going to follow Jesus is that I'm in love with Jesus Christ. Chapter twenty, or chapter twenty-one. Those who love Jesus live with Jesus for eternity. Verse 4, 
God's name in our foreheads. Chapter 22. Chapter 22, verse 7. Jesus is coming again. Revelation 22, verse 14. Those who enter heaven will be keeping God's commandments. Now let me, let me just comment on this one verse. Chapter 22, verse 14. Kind of want to see how much you know about the Bible, all right? Let me ask you something. When Adam and Eve sinned in Genesis, and they sinned against God by eating the forbidden fruit, what was removed from the Garden of Eden immediately? Does anybody know? Ah, oh, the tree of life. Because God didn't want eternal sinners. He wanted people that were saved by grace. So the tree of life was removed. But look there at chapter 22 and verse 14. Revelation 22, verse 14. Look what it says. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have right to the what? The tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Did you catch that? Because of sin, the tree of life was removed from our first parents. Because of salvation in Christ, the tree of life is given back to God's children. Oh, I love it. We're going to enter into the kingdom of heaven, the tree of life. Oh, what a day, what a day. Chapter 22, verse 17. We're coming to the close of Revelation. Listen to it. Anyone can choose to be saved, the Spirit and the bride. Remember the bride, Jesus Christ. Let him that heareth say, come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Oh, my dear friends, what a day, what a day to trust in Christ and say, Christ Jesus, save me. Save me from my sins. I want a drink of that water of life. Amen. <clears throat> Verse 21. <laughs> last. Look at, look, look at this. This is the last book of the Bible. It's the last chapter of the Bible. It's the last verse of the Bible. And look what it says. The grace of of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen and amen. Wow. Grace, 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 and more grace through Jesus Christ. Second phase or part. Are you ready? Have you ever heard those words? Are you ready? You know, we used to play that game, uh, uh, hide and seek. Anybody ever played hide and seek? I tell you, Gold Hill's a perfect place for playing hide and seek. Around our house up there on 52, uh, where I was born and raised, I want to tell you, we could, we'd go out there and all my buddies around the area, Bobby Udy, anybody ever remember Bobby Udy? He, he lived just right down the street here. Bobby Udy, red-headed guy, and uh, David Earnhardt, and, and Tony, and, and uh, Earnhardt, and the Poo's, uh, Gary Poole over here, uh, his, his relatives, uh, Joe Poo, and, and these guys, we used to play hide and go seek. And I want to tell you, that was, it was so dark around our house and we'd go out there and go hiding, you know. And, uh, and the one that was to go find everybody had to say, are you ready? Coming. Ready or not. What a game. We used to play that. Well, Jesus is coming and the words are going out. Are you ready? I'm coming. Ready or not. He's coming. But here's the big question when you hear those words. Where are we going? What shall I wear? <laughs> where are you going? What shall I wear? Are you ready? You know there's different attire for different places that you go. And the only attire for heaven when Jesus comes is His righteousness to cover me and to cover you and to write in my heart and in your heart the Word of God, the law of God. 
Yes, He's coming. And He's coming soon. Are you ready? Just a couple verses. Matthew chapter 24. Go with me if you would, please. Matthew chapter 24. Look with me here at verse 14. Carolyn, I'm watching my... Tri I don't have a watch. Am I doing all right, Carolyn? Am I doing all right on time? All right. Oh, let me, I don't want you to be late for your next service. What a lady. I can't, can you believe that she just works all over the place. Worked all week and helping us. Uh, you, you folks, uh, you know what? I think we ought to be a team. I just carry everybody with me. Everywhere we go to do seminars. And y'all take, take care of the music. And that would be a great thing, wouldn't it? To be able to do that. And David, the way he did that this morning, man, I'd let him stand up and do all the announcements. And that would be great. Hey, what a day. What a day. Jesus is coming. Matthew 24. Look with me at verse 14. And this is the part that you and I can play in the coming of Jesus. He says this, Matthew 24, 14, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then what shall happen? The end shall come. You and I can actually hasten the coming of Jesus. When we give our life to Christ fully and we're excited about salvation, we can tell people. I've had people say, well, I don't know how to witness. I don't know where I can witness. If you work, witness at work. If you have a business, witness at your business. Whatever we do, if you can't get out of bed, if you're sick and you can't get out of the house, Call people on the phone and tell them Jesus loves them. I want to tell you what. We need to be active because we can hasten the coming of the Lord. He comes when the world hears of the gospel message, the last message to the world. Revelation 14 is going to the world. And so that's why I go do what I do. That's why I share the good news. I want people to be ready. Hey, let's get ready so Jesus can come back soon. And yes, we have that part to hasten His coming. Now somebody says, well, we don't know when He's coming. That's true. If I stood up here and said Jesus is coming in 2025, I'd be lying because I do not know. No man could, should set a date for the coming of the Lord. No man knows but the Father only, as Jesus said Himself. But He's coming. And so verse 44, look at Matthew 24, 44. Therefore, be you also, what's that next word? Ready. Ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Wow. Be ready, he says. Get on the right garment. We're about to go to the wedding feast. We're about to meet Jesus in the clouds of heaven. Everything is pointing to the coming of Jesus. Yes. I've been doing this for many years now, sharing the gospel. And I want to tell you, I have never seen so many prophecies and so many signs in the world coming to pass at the same time. It is unbelievable. And we are seeing the events transpire. Look at Israel. Look at all that is happening over there today. Look at China. Look at the, all the places of the world. Jesus said there would be signs all through the world. And those signs are being fulfilled today. That tells me, yes, Jesus is coming again. But here's the good news. He's coming for me and you. And do you know why Jesus hasn't already come? Because there are scoffers. The Bible says there will be scoffers in the last, day, last days. And they will say, where is the promise of His coming? My, all the fathers have fell asleep and, and they told, they said He was coming and He didn't. And that's true. You think about it. All these times for years and years people have been talking about the coming of Jesus. And He hasn't come back yet. What's wrong? Has He forgot His promise? No. He hasn't forgot His promise the book of Peter, 1 Peter says this, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise of His coming, but is long-suffering to usward, 
not willing that one should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Good news. He hasn't come yet because he's waiting for me and you and all the other people that are not ready out there in the world. He's waiting for us to make a commitment and a decision to the Lord Jesus Christ. But one of these days, my Lord, your Lord, is going to say, I cannot wait anymore. I'm coming for my children. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Let us pray, Heavenly Father. Lord, we want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you that you've waited for me. You've waited for each one of us. And I know you can't wait much longer. When you come, Lord, I pray that every one of us here in this church this morning will be the ones that stand up when Christ is coming and we say, Lo, this is our God. This is our Lord. We have waited for Him. Lord, bless us. I pray that every one of us will draw closer and closer to Jesus Christ. And we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I think we've got some closing info here or a song or whatever. Uh, Let me, uh...
praise you, we thank you for what has taken place here in the last ten days and what's happened here this morning. Bring us each one closer to you, Lord. Help us to live that life. Let us turn everything over to you and watch you bless and work in a marvelous way in each one of our lives. Lord, bless the food that we're about to eat. We had the spiritual food, and now we're going to have some physical food. Bless it to nourish our bodies. Bless it that we be used for us, that we will be instruments in your hand that tell the love of Jesus to those we come in contact with. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. May the Lord go with each one of us. Amen.